Fun fact about gumbo is that gumbo actually derives from the African word of okra, which can also be put into gumbo. Well, if you don't like okra, you don't necessarily have to put in uh, okra, but you can like put in bell peppers. Or right here we have celery, bell peppers, and onions, which is called the Holy Trinity, which uh, Spain brought over. Seasoning to the chicken, and all it is is just chopped up uh, chicken thighs. Add some salt. And then I'm going to add the bay leaf. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter into it. And put the lid on. Now, um, some of the vegetables in gumbo can consist of celery, coarse bell peppers, or some other types of uh, vegetables. Like you can put some chopped onions in it. Of course, you have the andouille sausage. And then like another dish also associated with the Louisiana culture is red beans and rice, which you have right there. Um, like the difference between Cajun and Creole is Creole's like basically kind of like fancy dinner type, but Cajun's like a one big pot, like everything comes in one big pot, like family meals, sitting down, eating some gumbo out of a big giant pot, some rice. So we're gonna let this rice sit for about uh, 15 minutes, so that way the water can be soaked up uh, by the rice. The chicken's like really spicy, it's like choking me up right now. Yeah, I think some of the powder <laughs> went up my nose. <laughs> <coughs> That's some strong seasoning. <laughs> like with uh, gumbo, like you can spice it up. Like, depending on how your taste bud is, you can like use like a whole bunch of cayenne, uh, cayenne pepper, tobacco sauce, or Tony seasoning. Sometimes me and my family use them. It gives you a nice kick to it. And later we're just going to add some, uh, we're going to add the Holy Trinity, which is the, as she said earlier, the onion, the green pepper, and the celery. And we're going to add, we're going to sweat that so that it releases the juices from it and gives it the flavor. I'm adding filet powder, uh, cayenne powder, uh, salt, and pepper, and then of course the Creole seasoning on the chicken. Oh, I think the chicken's done. I'm going to pull out the bowl with the paper towel again and just gonna drain it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this rice sit for about 15 minutes. Let the water soak up into the rice. And then David's gonna show you some more that we add into the gumbo. And of course this is what the uh, roux would look like that you would have in the now I'm going to add the Holy Trinity here, and as we've been saying, it's just onion, green pepper, and uh, celery. So I'm just going to pour that in there. Which also, like the andouille sausage, is something that the Germans introduced to the Cajun Creole mix. So we're just going to sweat the Holy Trinity here, just to bring out the juices and release some flavor. And celery is extra delicious too. Gives it a nice crunch and all that. All right. Now I'm gonna add the uh, cayenne pepper, the filet pepper powder, excuse me. Which, you, the filet powder, you're gonna add about a tablespoon. And you're, then you're gonna add your cayenne pepper. And all you want is a, unless you wanna go overload, but we're just gonna go mild on this. You want a fourth tablespoon, teaspoon, excuse me. And then I'm going to add my salt and my pepper, which you just want a teaspoon. Okay, so rice has been sitting here for a couple minutes. Uh, once your rice is done, it'll look like this. Of course, you can take a bay leaf out. So you've got your finished rice. Um, if you want to add any extra seasoning after you're done cooking the rice, you can of course add more salt and pepper, or like I do, I like to add some cayenne pepper, which just like gives it a nice good spice. 
And now you're gonna add the uh, sausage and the chicken and some chicken stock into it. And plus the roux, which is just fat and flour and oil just cooked. You're gonna add about, anywhere, probably about six cups. Not two cups looks like it's just maybe a little more. Three cups probably. Now we're gonna add the roux to it to just thicken it up to make it more creamy. Doesn't wanna leave the pan. And right before we put it on there, we're just gonna throw about three, three, four bay leaves in there. And we're just gonna put the lid on and just let it simmer there. Give it a stir. It's looking good. It's getting that nice color from the browning of the chicken and the roux. It's gonna taste delicious. Okay, so now I'm gonna plate the rice on the plate. Mmm, that smells good. If you were here, you'd be salivating. We need some smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision. Stir this up, just make sure it's got everything in there. I want chicken on there, too. And I'm just gonna pull the ladle over, put it on that rice. Looks delicious. I think it needs a little more meat on there, don't you? Yeah. Mmm, that looks good. Yeah. People, if you were here right now, you'd be like, mm, yumbo, delicious. Finger licking good deliciousness. Or fork licking good deliciousness. You can use your finger or your forks, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back on so it stays warm. So what I'm gonna do with mine is, I'm gonna put some Tabasco sauce Oh, here, here's on. one that's open. Thank you. And I'm gonna put some garnish on too. You can put some parsley. I'm gonna put some parsley on there. Just you want a lot or a little? Add just a little. Bit. So there. I'm gonna put a lot more. I like the fresh herbs. Tabasco sauce. And you can't you can't forget the green onion. Bam! Oh snap! Bam! He did it again. Let's get some forks and try this. Fork. Mm. Yeah, perfect. That's really good. Please join us next time for our Mexican cuisine, which is specifically a Dia de los Muertos. We're going to Mexico! As always, thank you for joining us in our kitchen classroom. And as always, come, come eat our homework! <laughs>